There are plenty of times when you're building a dynamic website with Jet Engine that you need to create a list of items to be used in several different places. For example, a list of property types could be used in a custom post type. The same list could be used on a front end form and also in a set of filters using Jet Smart filters. Now, until recently, you would have had to have manually created the list each and every time you wanted to use it. That is, until Crockleblock released the glossaries feature, and that's exactly what we'll be covering in today's beginner's guide video. Now, if you missed the first videos in this series, there's a full playlist in the description. It's also linked in the corner right now. Okay, so let's get started with how to use glossaries in Jet Engine. Now that we've gone ahead and touched upon what glossaries are when it comes to Jet Engine, how do we actually create one? All we need to do is come into Jet Engine and choose the first option, Jet Engine. Inside there, we've got the glossary section. Now you need to make sure that you do have the most up-to-date version of Jet Engine. If you're running an older version, you may not see this, so make sure you are up-to-date. So what we need to do is open up the glossaries. Now, there's no glossaries created at the moment, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create one ourselves. So let's add a new glossary. And inside there, we've got two really simple things. The first of all is what's the name of this particular glossary? So we're just gonna call this property features. So we'll know exactly what it is. So next up, we've got the new field option. So if we click to add that in, we get three pieces of information that we need to fill out. And we need to do this for every single entry into this specific glossary. The field value, the field label, and whether this is selected by default. So you can easily come in and set various different field values up inside you, and then you can make certain ones selected that you want to be default selections. And if you don't need it selected or checked by default, you can simply leave that value empty. So let's create a couple of simple fields, and we'll set some to be checked by default and some to be ordinary. So what we're gonna do, first of all, does this have a garage? And this is the field value, and this is what's kind of stored in the database. So sometimes you may want to have the value separate to the field label. The label is what you'll see on the front end, and they can have reasons for being different values. Lots of cases though, and in this example, we're gonna have them both exactly the same. So we're simply gonna copy that, drop that underneath there, and we're gonna make this checked by default, just so I can demonstrate how this works. Next up, we're gonna come in and we're gonna say, does this have a sauna? And again, we'll put that information underneath. We'll leave that unchecked. We'll add a third and final field in now to say whether it has a tennis court. As you can imagine, these are all incredibly expensive properties. And if they have these kinds of things, you're gonna be paying a premium. Okay, so there's our first glossary created. As you can see, our first field for garage already has that checked by default and the other two are unchecked. Now, once you've created the glossary, we can use this in various different places. We're gonna look at how we can use this with search and filters in a separate video once you've completed this series on Jet Engine. If you've seen this in the future, check out the playlist this will be on because it might already be included and you can check it out if you're interested. Okay, so with that being done, how do we now go about using it? Well, let's just take the example of the properties post type that we created earlier. I showed you in the initial video in this series where and how to add in the glossary. Now I've deleted that, so we're gonna come back in and I'm gonna show you again from scratch now with the new glossary we've just created. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in to edit this. We'll open up our meta fields, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down and remove this properties features. So I'm just gonna delete that old entry from there. So now we want to add a new meta field in that references the glossaries. So we'll add our new meta, meta field in. We'll give this a name of property features and name ID is perfectly fine. Object type, we're gonna just leave that as it is. Field type, we're gonna come down and we're gonna say we want this to be the option for checkboxes. So we'll select that option and now that opens up a range of additional options. We can allow custom if you want to. So if you wanna let people add their own custom values, we could do that here. But what we're interested in is the get options from the glossary. Once we enable that option, that now opens up the ability to select the glossary we want to use. So we can open this up and we can see there's our property features, the glossary we just created. We'll add that inside there. Now the next option you have is, do you want to save this information as an array? If you're new to the term array, when you're using tools like PHP, the programming language that's used very prevalent when creating websites, part of what you can do in there is you can save anything where you can have multiple values, for example, a list of checkboxes, as one long string of information stored in the database, simply separated by commas. So where we've created our listings that'll have tennis courts and it'll have things like that, they could be saved in one long string with commas separated. The important thing to know is if you do that, we will need to make sure that we set things up correctly to output this information in the right way. 
So let's just set that to save this as an array. So it has one long string and that's all we need to do. We can update this post type or we can come back in and just quickly reposition this where we need this, which is going to be inside the features section. So we're gonna go into there and we'll update our post type. And now let's go over and take a look at our properties and inside our properties, we can make sure that we've got any of the relevant property features associated and added to that property. So under our features tab, you can see there's our garage, our sauna and our tennis court. Let's just say this one has a tennis court, but you can see the garage is selected by default because we set that up inside there. We'll say this has got a tennis court and we'll uncheck garage. Update that information, so that's updated it. Now, if we wanna come back in and remove that option from making it automatically selected, we can do that as well. We can just come back into our jet engine and into our glossaries, open this up, and we can say, we don't want that garage to be pre-selected. We'll unselect that, save it. And now when we come back into our properties and we say, we'll open this one up, we'll find that when we come down to our property features, you can see garage is not currently selected. And if we go back to the first one and open that up, you'll see if we scroll down again, garage is still not selected. So it's very easy to make sure that you can have these selected, turned on or turned off if you need them to be. Now that you've seen how to set up the glossary, let me show you quickly how to ensure that the information is displayed correctly on the front end of your website. Now this isn't the full guide to building the template files for your website, that will be coming in a later video. But this should help you see how to output the glossaries if you only want to watch this particular video in the series. I just quickly want to demonstrate how we actually output this information because there are various different ways in which we can do it. Now I'm using a listing grid as part of Jet Engine. I will show you how to set up your own custom listing grids in a dedicated tutorial. But if you're only watching this glossary one, I just wanted to make sure you could see how I do this just so you have an understanding of how the process works. Okay, so these are all done using the listing elements that are part of Jet Engine. This is a set of seven different options we have. What we're going to do is we're going to pull in a dynamic field and drop that underneath our description title and featured image. Now, once we do that, you can see this pulls in what it thinks is the right information, but we need to change that source to use the glossary that we've just created. To do that, we come over to the content tab on the left-hand side. Under source, we change that from post term user object data into metadata. This then allows us to choose the meta fields that are associated with our custom post types and any other metadata that we have associated with our entire setup of WordPress and Jet Engine. So we're gonna open this up. You can see there's our properties and inside there, we've got all of the different types of meta fields, including the property features, which uses our glossary. So once we select that, you'll see what happens is we get an error. And this is because we've got information saved in an array in the database that it doesn't really know what to do with. So to handle that, we simply come down to the option that says filter field output. Once we enable that, you can see this grays the box out because right now it doesn't exactly know what to do, how to input the information, how to output it, it just kind of get bits confused. So what we need to do is change the callback option. So if you're new to this, there are a lot of options and you'll find as you start to use Jet Engine more, you will see many use cases for using this callback function. And throughout this series, we will be taking a look at a few different variations. What we need to do is open this up. And if we scroll down a little bit, you can see we've got some options, multiple select field values, checkbox field values, and checked values list. So what we're going to do is let's take a look at the first option. Let's just choose this multiple select field values. Once we enable that, that now shows us the three different checked values that we have for this particular property in this example, which are all being pulled directly from our database, directly from that array that we created part of a glossary. And that's perfectly fine. You'll find if we choose the second option, which is the checkbox field values, we get pretty much exactly the same thing. We've got the delimiter underneath it, which just allows us to choose how we want to separate this. So for example, we could say we want to change that for a dash and you can see that will update and show dashes inside there. Up to you what kind of value you'd like to use on that if you want to use this method. But the third option is the checked values list, which in this example is probably a little bit more versatile. Once we choose that, you can see we now get a list of the values that have been checked in this example. So what we can do now is we can choose things like the number of columns we want to use and also add a divider. On top of that, we can also do things like customize the field output. If we open that option up, this little symbol here, this is what's called a macro when it comes to working with Jet Engine. And this is just simply showing that this is output in the data. And what we can do is we can put text, we can put anything we want before or after this. We can format it with HTML. We can do lots of really cool things. For example, if we just put in features on a colon, you can see that now puts that 
above our list. If we want to format this with HTML, let's just say we want to make this strong, so it'll embolden it, we can do just that, and we'll close that down at the end. And you can see that now formats that text. So it's pretty cool we can do that kind of thing. But let's just say we wanted to put a check mark in front of all of these different options that are selected. Can we do something like that? Again, yes, we can do exactly that. If we come back into the field icon, I just open up the field icon library and we'll just do a search for check mark and we'll say we'll use this one. We'll select that, insert that, and you see that now puts a check marks before every one of our list items. So there's a lot of control on what we can do and how we can use glossaries to speed things up and then how we can output that information and format it and do so many other things. To continue learning all about Crocoblox Jet Engine plugin, click this link next. It'll help you get so much more out of Jet Engine. And if you found this video useful, please consider hitting that thumbs up button. It really does help. However, if you didn't find the video useful, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice as that seems to work pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats, and until next time, take care.